this is Victor and here with a new painting tutorial and this time we are going to paint the shaman from the Orux that is from the uh, Warhammer Underworlds, the Orux, the Savage Orux um, Warband, I don't remember exactly the name to be fair of the Warband but okay this is not very important just trying to take off that I have seen here. Okay, let's go. So we're going to start with the skin and we're going to apply this. I go for a quite bright skin and I'm going to apply warp lining. Okay, one layer of it lower the skin and we are going to start okay so we are going to do try to not to go out of place and just we do this on all the skin so when you apply a contrast I don't go super thick you have to okay you have to be a little bit generous to have the effect of the contrast but you have to be careful like in when you're applying a wash okay you want to avoid that is pulling okay that you have accumulation of the pain in in and evacuating like stains or something like that this is going to be our base to start working on Okay, I also try to be careful not to do on other parts. If you make, yeah, if you did another part, is not the end of the wall, especially when you go to quite hidden parts. Like here behind the mask, we have all these feathers and I want to reach the torso. Okay, the important is we don't leave white spaces so unpainted parts so be sure that at least you cover all what needs to be painted as you can see I try to go there behind the mask okay and do the head of the orc so I'm going to do this on all the skin and I will be back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to do the cape that I will give some color to the cape and I will use the flesh tears contrast because I want to go for quite deep red and I will start with the inside. This is the reason I do the cape. I want to be sure that I do the most difficult parts, the ones with less access, and then later on we can do. But as we want to do the inside and the outside on the same color, I will do both parts. Okay. Try not to go into the green that we have already painted, and that's all. So let's apply this. Okay, this red is quite nice and I think it's a very it's a great way to do the base color for that. As usual, what I'm trying to do at the beginning is just to block, 
to lock the main color. So I'm going to do the tabard he's wearing. Okay, and I will use again another contrast. And I think I will go for the snake bite leather. This one. Okay. It's a nice color to have a mid-tone, if you want to do a mid-tone leather, I think it will do the work. So I'm trying, I'm imagining this as a non-treated leather type of thing. And we are going to do the back on a different color. Okay, so I will just do that. So we need to do, and I'm doing this because also I need to go the inside. So I want to be sure that I think I will. Even you, you can think to remove it from the base a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I can access now the bottom part, and I will clean up as well. Okay. So this is why I don't glue it at this moment. We can glue it once it's painted, once we have done this part, because now I realize that I can have access to some of the parts of the red cape that I did not reach easily. Okay, so I will go back to the red, and now I will wait this light before doing the next step. So this one looks like now that we have done the cape and the brown part and now I'm going to do the mask and for that I'm going to use Agarus Dunes. I will simulate a very light wood, like um, pine wood, something like that. And we're going to apply this on here, okay? Again, Agarus Dunes is a great contest paint, highly recommended. If you do this over silver, you will have gold. So, really, a color that I think it's great in, on any on any painter collection. Oh, okay, I did one feather by mistake. No problem. Okay, the feather I did by mistake, I will paint it white later on. Here I will move like that. You can see that give a very nice color and now I will go I will do the back. And here it's going to tricky because we have the feathers. And you can see that this color alone gives a great variation already. Okay. With a very nice shading. So it's for me it's maybe even better than the than the skeleton horde, although the skeleton horde is lighter and goes well for bones, okay? So yeah. now it comes a complicated part where this is why I do this first because this part here at the inside can be quite tricky. Okay, something like that. And we can do as well if you want the stuff. All the stuff can go with a. I will go the stuff with a darker wood. To have contrast with the rest. Okay, so I, uh, here we have to play a lot. We have a lot of leathers and woods and, and a lot of uh, brown materials. So you have to really play a lot with the different tonalities. One thing I detect sometimes uh, with the contrast paints is that they leave white dots, 
and it's because the, maybe the pain is moving away from some parts if there is a little bit of grease of your hand or something like that so go back and if it's needed do a second layer if you have some white dots okay but be careful if you do a second layer that the first one is completely dry if not you will start dragging away the previous paint job okay so I think like that should be okay and now we need to really be sure that the edges so I wanted to paint that feather in white because I don't want brown feathers on a brown mask so here is where we will need to add some color and I think I will use blues for the feathers and maybe reds some exotic feathers and I will keep the yellow for this type of things that I have okay so it will give some color to him so okay um, let's do this the the snake and for the snake I'm going to use dawn yellow as a base color okay I have here some dawn yellow it's very thin so I think I will need to put some we'll try it like that if not I will need to put so I'm going to go for a yellow snake this yellow pale snakes you can see my color is my paint is very thin ok I need to put some more paint because like that I will not do a good job And the idea here is to make, you know, the, this type. I don't know what is the the type the the what do you call this the rate of the snake or the spicy this piece of the snake, but it's the ones that are pale yellow. And I think it's the one I go. I will go for here. here. Okay. So I will apply don yellow on the snake, and I will be back. Okay, next I'm going to use a wild wood contrast okay, to do the, the back uh, well, we can, you can do some leather parts okay, I will wait to do the for the, one of the last things you can see how the snake looks like now with this yellow okay, and now we are going to do this on the back I will avoid to go over this since like a runic stone that he has here. There is a lot of small details on this guy. And you have yeah, you have to be careful. So I will do this here. Okay, you can see there's another runic stone there, another feather. So there's a lot of small details. It looks have more details than what you can see at the first side. Okay. And we are going to do as well the bell that is holding this. Okay. Okay, it's quite tricky, so I need to be careful. Oh, I go on this part. Okay, so I will do. I will do the this. Parts and I'm back for the next step. Okay, I think now I will start putting some color on the feathers. I want to see how they will look like, and I will use, for example, in some of them, a thermatic blue. Okay, uh, I will use contrast paints. So I think it's going to be the way to be faster doing them. Uh, with when you have something with nice texture like this again worshipped feathers contrast paints will do a perfect job okay let's take some random feathers 
and let's use this pythermatic blue maybe these were feathers of some type of azir creature Let's do another one here. Two one was yeah. It's very and let's do for example this one there. And next we can choose another color, maybe we can choose Magus, Magus purple and do other ones in this purple color. It's going to be very pinkish, eh, this purple. Yes, so let's do this one for example here. And remember that applying contrast, later on you can also apply if you want a wash on top and you will increase even more the contours that you are getting. Let's do for example this one, this one here. I will try to point more likely well greens for sure and I don't think I will do right snyder, maybe orange feathers. Do. I will put two purple together for example. Okay, then we can put purple this one here. It's the contrast paints is a very easy and fast way to do feathers. Okay. Maybe we can make some orange. Okay, go with home orange. And we can even make some on the whitish colors. So let's put this one for example here in orange. This is more one here in orange. And we can do this one here as well. This is from this side, I can reach it. Okay, and now I realize that on the snake I missed some part here super hidden. So I will know that I'm doing that I will before I forget. This is the tricky part of this disassembled miniatures. Sorry if I go a little bit off, off, off camera but it's these are really parts difficult to reach. Okay, okay. So we have almost all the feathers done. Let's do the last ones with apothecarium white. Okay, let's do some white feathers.
this one you can see I need to do a small correction later on because this is a green dot so I have, I have white here I'll take white Like that is okay. Okay, let's go now to the yellow and let's do these things. I have put white before so to ensure that they had a solid white before doing the yellow. I like this type of craziness on these shamans. Can you imagine them attaching their feathers from different animals they have killed, sacrificed in rituals? And I think it's fun to go a little bit colorful. Okay. Next, I will use no Gorgunta and I will do the staff. And now I realize I just miss one feather here that we can do it in any of the colors that we have done before. This will give this darker wood color that is quite will look quite nice. I like a lot making this type of dark little bit reddish wood. And I think here on the stuff of this guy will give a little bit of distinction. And I wanted to go on a different color than the mask and have contrasting with the and uh, also this will help me to have contrast with the school at the top and the horns so this is why I went for this darker wood Now I will wait that all this device again when I apply play with contrast and washes uh, from time to time I like to wait a little bit that everything settles down that we have the colors well placed do some clean up and come back and I'm just thinking maybe I will do the 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 wash on this on this snake and I will use Cassandra yellow to do a wash. Don't, don't put too much Cassandra yellow. I don't want to go to orange. Okay, Cassandra yellow is a little bit orange. So I don't want to go to orange to be fair. But we need to create some shades and then later on we are going to highlight this to really go a paler yellow. So let's apply this here. We are going to, this is going to show off a lot the, the connection that we have there. Not on the, on the part we have the rings, the set, but on the other part this should be flat. So we will need to do a correction there later on painting. And we apply it here. You can go a little bit heavier on the head to ensure that you shade everything. I think it will give. 
thing it will look good. Okay, now checking that I'm not going too much in any part. I want to play a bit more here. And as I said, now we will wait at this device and I will be back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to use Retributor Armor and we are going to do some of the ornaments this guy has. Okay, the two rings mainly, one on the ankle and the other one on the wrist. Let me see. Because I want to start doing you know, the the I want to start highlighting and start working on the so we are going to put retributor armor here. Okay, here and on these things. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'm back for the next step. Sorry. In the show you correctly so we're going to put it here okay and we play this one this one and then as well these things that are holding I don't know how this is called this four flurry things okay so we do this and I'm back for the next okay next step I'm going to do a correction one thing that we have here some like leather straps that are used to to yeah to have the mask to keep the mask on the face. I'm going to apply XV88 on these ones just to be sure I don't forget them later on because I went over with the green and now I just want to ensure but I'm applying the XV88 there. Okay, and from this side it's more tricky. We have the staff. So you just come carefully. And go like that, and on the other side. Is it the rage? Well, okay, here we go. Okay. So now let's go for the work on the skin. I want to start doing the skin. So I'm going to use three greens for this skin. I'm going to use mood green, washstone glow green, I think it's called. So mood green that is this one. Okay. I also have this one, lime green, okay, lighter one, this will help me to do some more higher highlights. I will have Caliban green for the shades and the main color will be Warstone Glow, okay. So let's take a little brush. And let's start, for example, here on the leg. I will start with wood green. Okay, and I will apply there. Now remember that I want to go for quite, and I will play as well with Warstone Glow so in case I need to and see Warstone Glow is very similar to the contour paint that we have used okay and once we have the Warstone Glow we go back and we use multi -win. Okay. 
that. I like to apply most of the time Warstone Glow to unify a little bit more the color to make sure they have a clean base and then we come with mode green and we do the highlights. And when you want something with even higher highlight, we will take the lima green and we put it in the places where we want. Put some water there. Lime green is very yellowish, but we can combine it very nicely with mud green. And then when you go too high, you go back with so yeah, with washstone glow, and then you smooth it. And we keep working this feet. So the foot, okay. So we apply first this. Now we apply. Warstone Glow, sorry, no Warstone, more green. And finally, we go for the fingers. On the fingers, we are going to do a mixture. You have to be careful because the, there's some parts. Okay, but we are going to work like that all the skin. So again, wood green first. No, warstone glow first, then wood green to increase or to make the tone lighter. So, I try to come quite thin, so when it dries, it's not as bright or light as it looks like. And here we have the palm of the joint. I'm going to put first. When you have this, I will apply Caliban Green all around. This will help to simulate a little bit the joint. No. In some places, I go on for example here with mud green. And I will cover everything, including this. And now I will take a little bit of mud green and do this. Even a little bit of lime. Okay. 
I really like this from make this type of berry bright tones on orcs. Line is to put a little bit of lighter in some places. Okay. And I like to keep working on that and trying to keep working highlights by zones and then I can go back to zone that I find when the device. I don't I'm, yeah, I think I can improve and come back and improve a little bit. Okay, the bell is going to be a challenge because we have the mask there in the middle of the way. I need to put a little bit of more weight on my palette. Okay, let's go on with the belly. We'll apply first worst and glow. And we'll look here at the breast. And I will use a little bit of Caliban Green because there I want this part to be darker. Now, let's put some mud green on the valley. Really we can put even a little bit of lime. Okay, we keep working with all this part of the torso. Okay. And then we will use Cabi Wine Green to make this this slot connection less visible. Now we take Mood Green with transition. The problem of the contrast paint, okay, I, I like a lot the contrast paints, 
But the have to, you have to the thing that you have to be conscious that it will also pop up any small defect. Okay. So this is why you need to do some cleanup and some layering after well, if you want to have if you want to dissimulate these parts. Okay. Especially on the push feed miniatures where sometimes the joints are more visible. They have improved a lot. But still, they need some work after assembly to dissimulate them. But I think they are, they have improved in, in general terms, although they still have some miniatures, like some of the new Stone Cross Eternals, that you have to be very careful from the Dominion box when assembly. Okay, so you can see I keep working on this and then we do the breast. Here again we have a lot of things there that are making some noise, I'm creating shades where we don't want it. And now we go with mode green. And we take first on low. We just need a little bit of color and if I need to make it even darker. And now we have to do the arms that are the same way as the legs. So I will keep working on the green and I'm back once the skin is done. Okay, so this is how the skin looks like. And next I'm going to apply a grey on the this type of runic stones. I'm going to use uh, the downstone grey, okay this one. Stone. I'm going to, I hope I don't forget any of these small stones because some rolling stones. I want to go with a darker color because then we are going to Okay, I will use it on all the different stones. Put in the one we have here next to the snake. Okay, and also this one. So I will do I will use downstone on the stones and I'm back. Okay, so next step I'm going to do the foot at the back. So we have done the grey and all the stones. I want to do the foot on the back to see how it looks like. And I will do the technique you have seen me so several times. So doing a gradient color, I will go leaving the dark in the middle. So, I will start with the Agarus Dunes, when I find it, of course. We I have Gorgunta, it's not by leather, the Wormwood, and I only need Agarus Dunes now. Okay, here is Agarus Dunes, we are going to apply it.
we are going to apply it all over the floor. Okay, and I will take the benefit that I'm carving agar stones to clean, to make, or to paint something that I missed before on the mask. Okay, yeah, this is. But it's not a problem. It dries a little bit. So, next. We go with snake by leather. We put it away, I don't want to have an accident. And we are going to apply this sorry, this is okay, that's no matter. This is Gorgunda. We are going to go directly then to Gorgunda. jump to Willwood and we will need to wait at this device okay no so we'll apply Willwood just on the here on the top part and now I will need to wait at this device because we will need to do what I will do is I will remove some from here and I will leave it lying like down the meter so it dries and once it dry, I will come to do a second layer. So this is how the food is looking like now. Okay, we are going to do a second layer, so we are going to use again Gorgunta. This was very uh, diluted. And we are going to apply a second layer. Putting more in the middle. Like that. No, I remove a lot from the brush and just. This is the advantage of the contrast. If you discharge or you remove a lot of paint from the brush, you can have lighter. Okay. And finally, I'm going to use again wool wood. Here in the middle. And what I will do now, I will stop the video here. Okay, the, the, the part one, I will stop it here because uh, it's going to be it's going to help me on the edition. And I will come back with the second part. So I hope you have enjoyed up to now. Please let me know what do you think. Let me know uh, your opinion about the paint job, uh, if you like it or not. And yeah, and keep tuned if you want to see the second part. And more likely it will be the final part on the paint job of Hedebaka. Okay, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye.